September is here and although it still feels like summer, there are signs the season is starting to wind down. The days are getting shorter and Lincoln is starting to hog the covers again. We need to start preparing for the cold weather, which is something we're never quite ready for. Are we lazy, in denial, or just overwhelmed? The big question, how do we stay warm in a big old stone building? The answer, we don't. Only the ground floor is equipped with radiators and the other two floors are without. We're very fortunate that every window in the chateau has interior shutters, creating a bit of a barrier from the wind and the cold air. We are now the proud owners of our very own log splitter, something we've needed from day one. Oh. That's why you need safety glasses, right? Yeah. That's better. So, welcome to our nightmare, right? <laughs> yeah. This is our old and complicated heating system. That's an oil boiler furnace. That's 70 kilowatts, which works out to 240,000 BTUs, which is huge. Yeah. And we only have radiators on the main floor of the house. So I'm assuming when they sized this, they got one big enough as if the whole house had radiators, but right. they just didn't bother to put them in to the put rest them of the house. <laughs> and then we have the white wood boiler. And we were very excited when we moved in, thinking, wow, we have two boilers. How great is that going to be, <laughs> right? Yeah. We arrived, and the oil boiler was broken. Right. It didn't work at didn't all. didn't work. And we discovered it's from the 80s? He, it it he, looks like it's from the 80s, yeah. um, I would guess. But, and also, the, the oil that was in the tank mm -hmm. was stale. It had been there for years. Yeah. So the previous owner was only using the one, which right, is the, the wood, wood boiler. boiler. Open it up because it's it looks like a it's massive mini crematorium. Can, I always think like, oh, what can we burn in here? But you can fit things that are about three feet long yeah. in there. So, so anything you have to burn. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, we just burn wood. That's it. We don't burn <laughs> bodies or no, nothing else. That's something bad. Yeah. So it you know you look at all the the pipes here. It's very complicated. I mean, red is hot. Blue is cold. So we got here, we had to have this, the oil boiler repaired, which cost us about, euros, what, yeah. 800 euros. Well, I, I've had a lot of trouble figuring out how to work the oil boiler, I mean the wood boiler properly, because when I use it, a lot of the time the radiators don't get warm enough. So I'm still trying to figure out, and I've, I've played with various settings, and um, I think I've got it pretty much worked out. We, and we always joke that with all the pipes and the the settings it's like it looks like you're down here in a submarine a, a submarine like <laughs> trying to figure out yeah what works and um i think last year the end of the winter you sort of had it worked out right you, you figured yeah, it out yeah but it's it's overly complicated and the the couple of plumbers who have looked at it don't really understand how it works because, <laughs> you know, we've got a water tank there that gets heated, you know, from whichever boiler you're using. Um, so that creates your domestic hot water. 
And we also have an electric one over here, hot water. Uh, Which is new. We just had to yeah. replace that. So, and if either one of them is disconnected, the, there's no hot water. Like, even though this is full of cold water, it hasn't, you know, it hasn't been run for a while because it's summer. If you disconnect or turn off the valve from that one, you can't get any hot water well, at how? all. It makes no sense. No, it doesn't make sense. It, and people haven't quite been able to figure out why it's set up that way. So who, but, do you think the previous, well, the previous owner was a... He was an engineer. He an engineer, so he so probably... he probably designed the whole thing himself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we've just had a real nightmare of a time trying to heat well it it actually the house it works quite well when you're using this yeah but that's oil but, i mean even when oil was half the price it is now i think the first winter you know we sort of wanted to keep the house warm and dry it out maybe because if it hadn't been heated properly for years and just that winter, we probably spent 5,000 euros yeah we were oil. living like kings like out of stupidity we were like okay well it's cold. It, turn turn the was, boiler on. It still wasn't super warm in the house. No. I mean it was it it was working, but it wasn't um it wasn't like luxuriously warm. So <laughs> last year we bought a tank of oil and made that last the whole winter. Right. This year well, we'll see. I <laughs> the think price of oil. There's still a little bit left uh, because what I found was if I started off just with the wood boiler, it took forever, a long time and a lot of wood before anything warmed up. But this thing is so powerful, if I turn it on for 15 or 20 minutes, the whole system is full of hot water. And then, so then you turn that off and go to this and it's all, the water's already hot, so it's not working as hard to, to it's not yeah, wasting all that bit wood basically. So, so basically, the system is is screwy and uh, it's a nightmare. Yeah. And this year we did get the log splitter, so you'll have yeah. hopefully better okay. luck not having to sit down here because poor Lincoln was down here for like hours <laughs> at a time, yeah, just sitting sitting on my stool playing. <laughs> yeah, it's like okay now. Uh, anyway, so this is the reality of having. A big old house that's not heated properly and there's also a problem with the way the the wood boiler is connected to the system because when i read the instructions for this it's intended to work in tandem with with your other boiler like for instance if you fill this up with wood and you have it it's all hot and then the middle of the night you know, it cools down because the fire burned out, then this one can come on mm -hmm. if you want it to and keep things going. So it's like a supplemental. Right. But this was hooked up not to do that. It's either or. That's the way it's been Oh, I, I didn't know that. Yes, because I've tried every every combination of yeah. trying to get this thing to come on when that goes down and it's just not working. So. Well, the other thing we need to point out, nobody really lived here in... The winter for probably 30, 40 years? Well, I think he was here in the prior, prior owner was here in the winter sometimes, but not, not, not a, a lot. Not consistently. So yeah. the house was pretty much left unheated for years. And hey, Guava. What you doing? Hey, Guava. Um, so our hope for the future is to <laughs> what? Well... We'll see this winter if I can successfully get this thing working properly without having to tend to it every minute um, and see if it can actually heat the house because we have a ton of wood. I mean, we have, just since we've moved here, we've had like five trees fall down on the property, large, like big oak trees and some others. So we do have some... Um, we have lots of wood. We have seasoned wood now, which is great. How can we get away from this system? Well, I think the... Long term. The long term, we probably need to try to... I mean, I'd love to try to do radiant heat, but that you know has to be in the floors. I mean, we have such high ceilings that the heat that gets into the room just all gets wasted because it goes up to the top. Radiant heat tends yeah. to keep the bottom part of the room warmer. So, you know, we've done that in, in the bathroom and the 
the bathroom we're about to do, we're going to do that also. But um, which the, that that heating, that underfloor heating is electric, and our hope for the future is to become somewhat self-sufficient with solar solar power, solar and, energy, and wind power. And wind power. Well, we would like to get away from the oil and the wood, right? Because it's not it's clean. Not, it's not the cleanest energy. Yeah. Um, I mean, using the wood, it's on the property. It's yeah. It's either going to rot or we're going to burn it. Might we, as well at least yeah. use a resource you have. Yeah. our kitchen and behind a wall sits a fireplace that we plan to unearth. Although we're still dealing with a terrible drought, we have had some success in the garden this year. We've been fortunate to get some much needed rain, forcing Lincoln back onto the tractor to tidy up the donkey field. The donkeys like having some company. And as you can see, Dominic is always the one that takes things a bit too far. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, and if you have something to say, leave us a comment.